Disneyland is a cathedral of lies. Not only have the theme parks got all sorts of dark secrets, as seen in this video narrated by an incredibly handsome man, but it turns out that all your favourite Disney movies are just horror films with a pretty facelift. The majority of Disney's cinematic canon are based on pre-existing fairy tales and legends, and let's just say that Disney were very careful in their editing process because certain bits of those stories come straight out of hell. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 horrifying stories behind your favourite Disney movies. Number 10. The Prince Knocks Up Rapunzel and Then Is Blinded So the Disney version of Rapunzel, aka Tangled, featured funny songs and japes with a sassy chameleon and a police horse. Rapunzel is stolen by Mother Gothel because of her magic hair, encounters a thief with a heart of gold, shenanigans, witch dies, marriage, the end. Now, yes, this film does feature someone appearing to be stabbed to death, which is pretty gruesome for a Disney flick, but the original Brothers Grimm fairy tale is a lot more, well, grim, I guess. First of all, Rapunzel is given away to the witch because her mother really wanted a salad. Seriously. Second of all, during his nightly hair climbing visits, the prince knocks up Rapunzel with twins. Please don't freak out! Which he then has to raise alone in the woods for years after the witch disowns her. Oh, I'm not freaking out, are you freaking out? And third of all, the prince, finding out that Rapunzel was gone, attempts to kill himself by jumping from the tower but survives by landing in thorn bushes. However, the thorns poke out his eyes. Number 9. The Frog Prince Had His Head Cut Off Get that frog! The tale of the Frog Prince, the classic story of social climbing via bestiality, is one of the most enduring fairy tales ever written, and there have been dozens of different translations and cultural appropriations of the story over the years. The Disney version went with the classic kiss to break the curse, but in various other versions of the tale, the frog's journey towards princehood was much more violent. It Please kill me. In certain Scottish tellings, the frog had to have his head chopped off with an axe or a trowel in order to become a prince. In the Korean version of the story, the frog had to be cut open with scissors, and in the Brothers Grimm tale, the frog is smashed against a wall until he turns into a prince charming. Maybe they changed it to kissing in the first place after a spate of frog murders by impressionable young girls. Number 8. Belle's sisters try to get her eaten. It's hard to find a good sister in a fairy tale, they're always either wicked or ugly, and in the original work of Beauty and the Beast, Belle's were no exception. The story written by Jeanne-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont, who has the Frenchest name in the world, featured Belle, after growing to care for the beast, being allowed to visit her family for a week before returning to the castle. Her sisters, jealous of Belle's happiness, conspire to guilt her into staying longer, in the hope that staying longer than a week will enrage the beast enough to eat her. What? Fortunately, this scheme of tardiness-induced murder doesn't come to pass, but seriously, damn sisters, you nasty. Right then, number seven, the ugly truth behind the hunchback of Notre Dame. Get it? Because he's ugly. <laughs> oh, p off. So believe it or not, in Victor Hugo's original novel, Notre Dame de Paris, there are no singing musical statues. But wait, there's more. The novel ends with Esmeralda being hanged for a crime she didn't commit. Last words. But wait, there's more. After her body is taken to a mass tomb, oh no. Quasimodo lies by her dead body oh no. and starves to death. When a tomb is open, the skeletons of both bodies are still there next to each other, and when someone tries to move them, they crumble to dust. Still, that's better than the cheese ball ending with a little girl touching his face. Now that was horrible. Number 6. Cinderella and the Vengeful Dove For the famous film about a woman who guilts a bunch of mice into making her a prom dress, Happy birthday. Walt Disney adapted Cendralon by Charles Perrault. That's a terrible pronunciation of both those names, and thank God he did, because had he chosen the Brothers Grimm version of the tale, originally entitled Ashen Poodle, again pronunciation, we'd still be having nightmares about it. During the slipper-related climax to the Brothers Grimm version, the stepsisters both mutilate their feet in order to fit into the, in this version, golden slipper, with one sister cutting off all of her toes and the other slicing off part of her heel. Then doves, yes, as in birds, alert the prince to their treachery and he discovers Ashen Poodle, aka Cinderella, whom the slipper fits perfectly. During the prince and Cinder's wedding, the doves then peck the eyes of her stepsisters, rendering them blind. Because why not? Why wouldn't that happen at a nice wedding? Number 5. Snow White was super young. In the Brothers Grimm tale, how old do you think Snow White was when she was taken into the woods to be killed? Seven. Seven years old. Here is a picture of a seven-year-old child. Now this story just got 
really creepy, because not only was the evil queen trying to repeatedly murder a seven-year-old child, but at the end, Prince Charming wooed and married her. You know what, let's just not go there. Oh, and by the way, the evil queen's punishment for attempting child murder? She was forced to wear red-hot iron shoes and dance until she died. Maybe something lighter now, please? Number four, Pocahontas was super young. Oh, for God's sake. So, Pocahontas met John Smith in 1607 when he was captured by Native Americans, ruled over by her father, Chief Powhatan. Chief Powhatan. Powhatan. I'm doing really well today. So John Smith's story goes, he had his head placed on a rock and was about to have it smashed in with a club when Pocahontas intervened, placing her head on his. In the Disney version, they fall in love, kiss, then separate amicably. In real life, she was 12 when they met, was later captured by the British, taken to England, forced to convert to Christianity, had her name changed to Rebecca, and died before she could return to her native family. Historians disagree on whether or not she had a cheeky raccoon friend. Number three, Pinocchio is all sorts of messed up. No, no, no! Yes, yes, Pinocchio yes. is already a pretty weird movie involving children being turned into donkeys and a walking puppet being swallowed by a whale. However, here's a brief list of things that the movie omitted from Carlo Collodi's original. Pinocchio accidentally kills Jiminy Cricket and his ghost follows him around throughout the story. The cat that tries to con the little puppet gets his paw bitten off by Pinocchio. Oh, no. The fox and the cat then try and hang Pinocchio from a tree. A snake laughs itself to death by bursting an artery. I bet a lot of you folks don't believe that. Pinocchio is transformed fully into a donkey and his donkey flesh is eaten off by fish. Anyone else feeling a deep pain where their childhood used to be? Y yes, sir. I wanna go home to my mama! Number two, Sleeping Beauty is sexually assaulted. Oh, for this is starting to get a little much for me. My brain's starting to hurt. Sleeping Beauty is based on a number of stories. One of them is Sun, Moon and Talia by Giambattista Basile. Again, these names, these goddamn names. In this story, Talia pricks herself on a splinter of a spindle and falls into a death-like sleep. Then a passing king discovers her, is taken by her beauty, and has sex with her motionless body, then goes off about his kingly business forgetting all about her. Nine months later, Talia gives birth to twins, while still asleep, <gasps> and only wakes up when one of them sucks a splinter from her finger. Then the king remembers the woman he sexually assaulted, finds her, tells her what he did, and the two obviously fall in love. Oh, and to follow up, the evil queen who cast a curse in the first place tries to have Talia's twins killed and cooked. Ow, ow, ow. Number one, Little Mermaid doesn't get the prince and then kills herself. Okay, I'm done. That's, that's terrible. Right, so this is really upsetting. So tell you what, we'll make it better by intercutting it with footage from under the sea just to help us all through it. So, in the Hans Christian Andersen original, in exchange for the human form needed to reach her beloved prince, the sea witch cuts out the Little Mermaid's tongue. The Little Mermaid gets human legs, but every step she takes feels like she's walking on knives and that her toes are bleeding. She dances with the prince, which causes her endless, excruciating pain. The prince is set to marry another, but the Little Mermaid can get her fish form back if she stabs the prince with a special knife and lets his blood fall on her feet. But she can't do it and throws herself into the sea where she dissolves into foam. Oh God, childhood happiness is a lie. Everything dies. Life is unending pain. Please, Disney, make me forget. Make me forget everything. Lie to me. Lie to me. And that's our list. Do we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.